Okay, I want to apologize to everyone that we're starting the meeting late. I guess there were some mix ups. So um, we're starting the Monday, October 19th, uh, Sonora City Council meeting at 5.12 p.m. Uh, there was no closed session today and open session now is uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And would you lead our Pledge of Allegiance, please? <laughs> to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please, Mary Rose. Mayor Hawkins? Here. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Plummer appears to be absent. Council Member Garaventa? Here. Council Member Sagerstrom? Here. And Council Member Such? Here. Two. Okay. We do have uh, we do have four council members here, and I believe uh, Mayor Pro Tem Plummer is absent. He is working on a fire with his chainsaw. Okay. Uh, city clerk's report on agenda posting. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the agenda was posted on Friday, October sixteenth, at three fifteen p.m. Thank you. And then approval of the agenda. Council. Everything's good. Uh, does it require a motion? No. no. Looks good to me. Okay. Uh, next is consent calendar. Public comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm moving through. Every time I get started off late, I start. Uh, no, no. Start. They had their ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Okay. Public comment on any non-agenda items. The public may address the council on any item of public interest not otherwise on the agenda that is within the jurisdiction of the city. No action may be taken. Matters to be addressed may be referred to the city staff or placed on a subsequent meeting agenda. Speakers are limited to a five minute presentation. Do we have anybody that would like to speak on public comment? Here. Looks like there's a hand raised from the Sonora Chamber. Okay, excellent. We could unmute them. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. This is Katie Dunn, the president of the Sonora Chamber of Commerce. And I am, I just wanted to remind you that we have our second virtual chamber mixer tomorrow evening. Um, we did send each council member a special invite to our mixer. So we hope you can join us tomorrow night. Um, our first one was really, really fun, very informative. And it actually, it opens, the, the Zoom room opens at five, but it actually starts at 5.30. Um, and we will have a raffle. And if you have any announcements that you would like to make, we, we would love for you to um, be there and announce whatever is on your mind. Um, and um, it goes from 5.30 to seven. So we hope that you can join us tomorrow night. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I got it today and uh, I have my costume ready. <laughs> great. That's great. Th thank you very much. You're very welcome. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak in public comment on any non-agenda items? Mary Rose, do you see anybody else raising their hands? I don't. Okay. Okay, we shall move on to the consent calendar. Uh, items on the consent calendar are considered routine and would be voted on in one motion unless a council member or members of the public has a question or wishes to discuss an item. In that case, the item will be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately. Item number one is approval of disbursements in the amount of $148,928.75 for payroll, inclusive employee salaries, employer and employee taxes and retirement contributions, miscellaneous voluntarily, voluntary employee deductions, retrospective pay, holiday pay, and equity adjustments. And then number two is waive the second reading and adopt ordinance number 872. Any council members have any additions, subtractions? Okay, is there any public comment on this item? 
if you have any public comment, please make sure to raise your hand in the raise your hand feature. Mr. Mayor, I am not seeing anybody raising their hand. So make one last check. Okay, no, no public comments. Sir. Okay, excellent. Okay, so bring it back to the council for a move on staff recommendation. Is that you, Council Member Garaventa? It, 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 his name popped up. So. Okay. And then looking for a second. Okay, motion by Councilmember Garaventa, second by Councilmember Such. Roll call vote, please, Mary Rose. Mayor Hawkins? Aye. Council member Garaventa. I think he's muted. Council member Garaventa. Oh, there we go. Aye. <laughs> did you hear me? Hi. Did you say yes, Jim? He said aye. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. All right. And aye. Council member Such? Aye. With, Council, uh, with Mayor Pro Tem Plummer absent. Okay. Passes 4 0. Oh. Okay, under new business, consideration to approve the city of Sonora to apply for Walmart local community grants and approve the letter verifying the city of Sonora is a certified agency as recognized by the state of California. Mary Rose. So these are grants that the city of Sonora brings forward every year for um, council approval and also to certify that we are recognized agency by the state of California. Um, what we're asking, what state, what staff is asking the council to approve is to allow for the overarching city to apply so that multiple departments um, within the city, such as your fire, your police and other, age, uh, other departments can apply for these local um, grants from Walmart. And then we're asking, also asking for um, approval of the certification letter, um, recognizing that we are a recognized agency within the state of California. So the actual request by departments would vary um, within the police department and the fire department and whatnot. Um, but this is something that we generally do uh, on a yearly basis in front of the council. Have we been successful in years past? I believe we ha we have, and I believe it was the fire department that we were successful at. And if Chief New is on the line, if you would like to speak in regards to previous grants that we've received, Chief New? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so the fire department, um, before before I arrived, they were successful in uh, in receiving one of the community grants uh, through Walmart to purchase um, physical fitness equipment uh, for the fire station. So um, we're, we're hoping that with the new engine coming, we, we, uh, we have equipment that we need uh, to purchase for the new engine, and that would help us out with, uh, with purchasing that equipment. Okay, thank you. And there also is a potential for our, our police department to apply as well. Okay, great. Does public work supply? I don't believe they have. Councilmember Such. Would it, would it ever be appropriate to ask the council if there's something they would like <clears throat> for the city? Um, I, I would have to look at the grant requirements. They're generally for equipment for within the departments requesting them. So I would have to look at the grant requirements of exactly um, what those particulars are, but generally they're for equipment, like like uh, Chief News stated. And I know, um, I believe the police chief said he applied last year as well and received a small allocation as well from his department. But I would have to look at research that for you. I just was, I was just curious because we're going to have a meeting at I think the beginning of next year <clears throat> about those. And that would be nice. Maybe sometimes they could reach out. We could talk about that. So. The, uh, the, the grant information is available on the website, Walmart website. I did look at it. We did. And if there's something, you know, you can always ask staff to look at and apply oh, on behalf of the city. Oh, yeah. no, we would. I mean, our, I would. Thanks. Okay. Uh, looking for any public comment on this item. Don't raise your hand all at once. Sorry. I don't see yep. any public comment. Give it five more seconds. Okay. Okay, so uh, bring it back to the council for a motion and or a vote. 
Um, I'll move to approve the city of Sonora apply for lo Walmart local community grants and approve the letter verifying the city of Sonora is a certified agency as recognized by the state of California. I'll second. Okay, uh, motion by council member Sagerstrom, second by council member Such. Um, roll call vote, please. Mayor Hawkins? Aye. Council member Garaventa? Aye. Council member Sagerstrom? Aye. And council member Such? Aye. And council, or excuse me, Mayor Pro Tem Plummer is absent. Okay, passes 4 0. Okay, item number four under new business is approved resolution number 1019 2020-A, approving the naming of the common driveway on the Royce parcel map as Ana Dio de Cobre. And this item is actually coming from your community development director, Rochelle Kellogg. So I'm gonna let her introduce this item for you. Thank you very much. So um, normally what will happen on a map, especially a subdivision map, is as part of the map approval process, um, when the final map is approved, it'll include the names uh, or the tentative map. It'll include the names of the streets um, and the council will approve it at that time. Um, sometimes on these parcel maps where you have more of a common driveway, it's not a road that's being accepted as by the city for maintenance. Um, we have had this come up a couple times where later on after the map records, uh, they'll come back and request the, uh, the naming of the street. Street names are regulated by the city council and so they have to be approved by the city council. Um, and the current owners, um, Evan and Michael Royce are the ones that developed the, or uh, recorded the parcel map, but we do have new owners for the property and that is um, Aaron, but he goes by Nick and Amanda Boyce. Um, they are the owners of the property and um, Nick is on um, participating in the meeting tonight in case you have any questions for him. Um, and they have submitted a request for the council to consider and they want to name uh, the common driveway for this parcel map, Anillo de Cobre. And um, I have included a copy of the parcel map that shows the, uh, the common driveway. It is a public, um, access so the public can access these parcels um, and it does serve four parcels um, and I believe um, they're going to go ahead and have it serve the re remainder which now is um, accessing um, by the Preston through Preston Place the Preston Place area so um, it's a pretty simple application but if you have any questions um, of me um, I'm here and the applicants here as well. Um, I did circulate this through the departments, uh, police, fire, um, and also through Kim who does all the addressing. Um, no concerns were expressed. So um, uh, we're just seeking your approval tonight. Okay. Uh, council members, council member Such. I just, I just wanna clarify is the, is the road that they're talking about, the road that goes from Preston Place and then attaches to what looks like a undeveloped common area between the four parcels. Is that the, is that no, the it, road? It'll, it'll come off of Roble Road. It actually uh, originates at mm -hmm. Roble Road um, and it dead ends into the property. Um, it won't connect through oh. and come out on the Highway 49. Okay. Oh, I see, there's Roble right there. Okay. Any other council member questions? Jim, you've been quiet tonight. Do you have anything? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Okay, so I guess I will look for public comment on this matter. If you'd like to make a comment, please use the raise your hand feature, star nine or under participants. Um, again, press raise your hand. Mayor, there doesn't appear to be anybody who's raised their hand. Okay. Okay, so we'll bring it back to the council. And before I ask for a motion in a second, I did want to just point out that this, um, again, all we're doing tonight is talking about the road, but I want to thank the voices for um, taking over this. And I think it's going to be really nice. I know that has been a big fire danger for a long time, that area. I'm years ago i actually met with um several of the neighbors that were really concerned so i just want to say thank you and I, i'm sure this will be very nice so looking for a motion in a second 
Uh, I move to approve uh, resolution number 10-19-2020-A, approving the name of the common driveway of the, on the Royce parcel map as a Neo de Cobre, which means a ring of copper. <laughs> we looked it up. <laughs> Couldn't find the road, but I knew what to do. <laughs> Looking for a second. Oh, I'll second it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Motion by Councilmember Sagestrom, second by Councilmember Such. Mary Rose, roll call vote, please. Mayor Hawkins? Aye. Councilmember Garaventa? Aye. Councilmember Sagerstrom? Aye. Councilmember Such? Aye. With uh, Mayor Pro Tem Plummer absent. Passes four to O. Oh. Okay. Consideration to approve and authorize the city administrator to execute the amendment to the amended and restated franchise agreement with Cal Sierra Disposal for a term of five years. Mary Rose. So this item, this is actually, um, well, it's the second time that it's come before you in the last six months. Um, we brought it forth um, on May 18th, 2020, asking for an extension um, of the deadline. Um, the original agreement between the city of Sonora and Cal Sierra Disposal uh, was set to expire on August 31st, 2020. And due to COVID, uh, the city staff did not have appropriate time to negotiate in good faith with Cal Sierra. Um, and so on May 18th, we brought forward a, a first amendment to extend the deadline to be able to negotiate in good faith with Cal Sierra. This, um, this amendment in front of you, um, is, has been negotiated with Cal Sierra, and it does extend the term of the agreement from the original 2010 executed document to October 31st, 2025. Um, and then if you recall on September 21st, Cal Sierra um, through uh, Vanessa Barbaris presented um, the uh, Sonora Recycling Education Campaign Update. And in her presentation on September 21st, she talked about the campaign of recycling, which is now incorporated in this amended and re restated franchise agreement. So um, that document on that PowerPoint she presented is in front of you to review as well. But um, as you recall, there was a campaign that has been going out into the community in the month of September um, in regards to what this amended restated agreement talks about in terms of the new recycling program. Um, one thing I do want to point out is one of the things that we negotiated with Cal Sierra is the ability to establish um, base rate increases based on the CPI. I know that's been a discussion among the council in regards to how we justify the increase of base rates. When we look at when we look at increases to your base rates, you know there there are issues concerning how we. We use CPI. I know the discussion has been, why do we use an urban CPI? Why, why isn't there a rural CPI? And, and in actuality, there is no rural CPI that the city of Sonora can base those, those base rate changes to. So you're noticing in this amended restated, we have kept the language for the urban CPI. Um, we did discuss with Cal Sierra looking at a different mechanism um, at base rate changes, maybe looking at an overall solid waste average increase for the industry. And in discussion, we actually thought that that would actually probably increase at higher rates when you're looking at overall solid waste increases, as opposed to looking just at the CPI. So that has been a discussion between staff and Cal Sierra because we knew that it was a priority here with the city council. So again, um, Exhibit A, you will notice, is not actually in this amended and reinstated. And exhibit A is your base rate changes. We have negotiated with Cal Sierra that those changes um, would, we needed to have 60 days ability to review properly those base rate changes before we brought forward those changes to the council for approval. So those changes, exhibit A is not incorporated as of yet. They will be brought forward within 60 days um, for the council's approval, um, thereby giving staff the ability to thoroughly review and vet the increases to the base rate change. So again, exhibit B is your recyclable document, which was discussed on your September 21st meeting. Exhibit A talks about the base rate changes, but those will come before the council um, within a 60 day timeframe 
um, to allow for staff vetting um, of those base rate changes. And then another change that we talked about and that staff is recommending is in the previous agreement, um, Section 11 of the amendment provides collection services to the city of Sonora by Cal Sierra. That amount had been about a $30,000 annual amount that Cal Sierra provided to the city of Sonora. That amount has increased under this amended and restated agreement to 45,000. And that allows for uh, Cal Sierra Waste Manager to be able to pick up um, our solid waste, our trash here within the city. So that amount increases to 45,000 annually. So those are the majority of your amended terms. Again, it's increasing to another five year from another five year to out to 2025. Um, we, we talked at length about the uses of the CPI versus looking at another average index. Staff is recommending that we still use CPI urban index. Um, and then also we are ensuring that staff has adequate time to review base rate changes so that those changes will not come before the council um, until within that 60 day time frame. And then increasing um, the annual um, services that Cal Sierra provides to the city from 30,000 to 45,000 annually. And at this time, I will entertain any, uh, any questions you might have. To me, it seems pretty cut and dry, so I don't have any questions. Um, um, the uh, the base services from thirty to forty five thousand uh, was that two thousand ten base services. I mean, that's a fifty percent increase. Yeah. So I mean, at the time that it was negotiated in two thousand ten, that was okay. So that so it's gone two thousand ten to two thousand twenty. Yeah. Okay. So right. looking at you know Cal Sierra yeah, and, yeah. and Vanessa is on the phone for us if we have any questions yeah. for her. You know, looking at the, the services that Cal Sierra Waste Manager provides to the city on behalf of the city, you know, we estimated that that increase has come 30,000. So we're, we're looking at about a $45,000. Yeah, well, you know, I just wanted to know the time frame. Yeah. So it makes, makes sense. Yeah. Sadly, it makes sense. And like I said, I know the CPI was a big discussion for the city council. Staff did spend quite a length of time discussing with waste management on, on the use of CPI versus other indexes. Um, and we felt that this would be the most beneficial for the consumer so that it would not rise exponentially with a different averaging um, matrices. Yeah, well, also, I mean, how how much could a rural CPI? Um, There's differ? no such thing as a rural I know, CPI. I know, but how much could it? I mean, aren't we paying the same prices generally as, as urban dwellers? So generally, if you're looking at an urban CPI, it generally increases between Two to three percent a year, yeah. correct, Vanessa? That's about two to three percent a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's how much my rent went up in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a really you know minimal amount. I just you know wasn't sure that that you could really um, argue that a rural CPI would be that much less. Yeah, and I, and I think it's because the establishment of that, the only other CPI that is available to us is the use of Southern California CPI. And that's yeah. just yeah. No, that's I, I, completely out of our jurisdiction. No, I, I think CPI is a reasonable and um, uh, kind of, uh, of uh, increase to expect. Councilmember Garavena, did you have anything? Uh, no, um, I don't. Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll look for public comment. Anybody Don't raise want, your hands at once. Anybody wanting to speak, please press use the raise your hand feature. If you're on a phone, press star nine. Otherwise, press raise your hand. Mayor, there does not appear to be any hands raised. Okay. Okay, I, I want to say good job to staff. I'm not sure of everyone who worked on it, but good job to staff for getting this together and it takes a lot of work and fighting, quite frankly, fighting for the people of Sonora. Um, 10 years ago, we were in a spot and usually everybody knows because it's one of my favorite stories to talk about, but um, we're in an interesting spot then and we got recycling and some other things, but I really, really appreciate staff for working on this as hard as they did. So I guess. Yeah, you know, and it's a service that I know all of us depend on and um, and appreciate. So I'm I'm glad that we can come to a agreement. 
Me too. Okay, so looking for a motion in a second. Come on, Colette, step up. <laughs> oh <my gosh. clears throat> um, I would like to approve and authorize the city administrator to execute the amendment to the, amend the amended and restated franchise agreement with Cal Sierra Disposal for a term of five years. I second. Okay, motion made by Councilmember Such and a second by Councilmember Sagestrom. Mary Rose, roll call vote, please. Mayor Hawkins. Aye. Councilmember Garaventa. Aye. Councilmember Sagerstrom. Aye. And Councilmember Such. Aye. With Mayor Pro Tem Plumber absent. Okay, passes four to zero. And again, Mr. Mayor, this will come before you for approval of the base rates within 60 days. 60 okay. Days. okay. Thank you, Vanessa. Excellent. Okay, under new business, item number six, provide staff any further direction or input on the draft Tuolumne County Fire Joint Powers Authority Agreement. Mary Rose. <clears throat> and Mr. Mayor and council members, um, this item is coming before you as myself and your city attorney has pledged to be as tra transparent as we can in regards to the potential fire parcel tax. Um, and we had stated back in September when we had asked authorization from a letter of intent from the council that we would be bringing forth um, to the council, um, you know, anything um, so that it was most transparent to the public as much as possible. What we're asking at this point is for consideration and possible further direction on a draft JPA Joint Powers Authority document, um, which would be um, a JPA authority with the County of Tuolumne, the City of Sonora, Columbia Fire Protection District, Groveland Community Services District, Jamestown Fire Pro Protection District, and Tuolumne Fire Protection District. This is not asking for approval at this juncture. It is asking for any additional input. Um, what the draft states is it goes into the purpose and the membership of the overall fire potential fire um, parcel tax, um, special tax um, that would be potentially going to the voters uh, in, in June. So again, why the need for the JPA? And we talked about this back in September when we looked at the overall letter of intent. Um, it, as you recall, um, the county had in the summertime talked about bringing forth to the voters a special fire parcel tax um, in regards to revenue generation um, for fire protection services in the unincorporated area of Tuolumne County. If you also recall, the city of Sonora, along with other fire protection districts, have a mutual aid agreement um, with the county of Tuolumne and with amongst all of those members to provide fire protection services within the county as a whole. So if the county were to ask for a special tax um, in the unincorporated area, you would see potentially the city of Sonora and fire, other fire districts need for a, a fire parcel tax as well. And in an effort to ensure that there is not a lot of voter confusion, um, there was a request from the fire districts and the city of Sonora to join with the county of Tuolumne to ensure that if there was a potential a special tax that went on the ballot to the voters, that it would not confuse voters and it would go as one ballot measure. So as opposed to seeing multiple ballot measures, this JPA only creates a taxing authority to create one ballot measure for the voters to vote on so that the voters would not see six to eight different ballot measures. Again, this is just a draft that is before you at the moment. We are asking for your consideration and additional input. The JPA draft talks about the purpose and the membership, who would be involved in the JPA. It talks about the board of directors. At this point, every jurisdiction would be, comp uh, would be allowed to have a board of director be represented by each agency. So the city of Sonora would have one elected official um, uh, to serve on this JPA. It talks about the powers of authority in this draft um, and the duties of the treasurer and the auditor controller. Um, there is a cost associated with the creation of the JPA and a potential fire tax. When you talk about a special, a special tax, there is money um, to put a special election together 
for this potential fire attack. So we need to think about that. There are administrative costs that would be attached if the council so chooses or if the voters approve a fire tax in the disbursement of the taxing of those monies. Um, however, at this point, like I stated, this is simply just looking for additional direction. It is not for approval of the of the the or the, excuse me the JPA document. The final document will be coming before the council in December, um, and at that time, the council can vote to approve the final JPA document. And also, at that time, Mr. Mayor, you can also select your representative to the JPA at that point if the council so chooses. So again, just asking for additional direction so that the county and the fire districts and the city can proceed on our timeline for the potential of the creation of a JPA. Any council member questions? Council member Such. I just have a few questions. Um, are members the same as the board of directors? Is, is that term being used in, like in section 5A? It's so the authority without approval of members who are the members. Yeah, so the members, um, the members are, are the specific agencies and the board of directors is the representative of those, me of so those members, members agency. agency. Okay. Yes. And then um, <clears throat> on, your, on page four under section six funding A, um, with this agreement to fund this authority and by June 1st of, the, 1st of each succeeding year. So that, and they're talking about the budget um, so is that the budget is brought to to whom? To the board or to the members or to the council? To the JPA. To the JPA. Yes. And um, to adopt a budget to start on the, and by June 1st of each succeeding year. So the budget goes to the JPA on June 1st to be adopted by on June, on July yes. 1st. Yes. Okay. Now I will say, because I know we have we have some questions about membership into a JPA with different agencies. And I don't mean to interrupt you, council member such, but this, this type of JPA will not create, as it stands right now, this is just um, the taxing authority. There is the ability to have a multi-tiered system within the membership. So if, if the membership so chooses down the line, and you'll notice that um, on section, sorry, when it talks about membership, it, on section three, it does talk about initial membership versus successor membership. So this does give the possibility down the road, if the membership so chooses to allow for fire services under this JPA. As it stands for right now, this would only allow for, as the initial membership would only allow for the taxing authority, which means it would not create um, staff time. So when you talk about a budget, we're not talking about other JPAs that we've been a part of that we've had to pay for staff time and, and other things um, in that regard. Just to clarify. Um, I have a question for section 8C. <clears throat> okay. That's addressing the auditor and the audit. Is this a, a, a formal audit? I mean, there was, with, I know that with the TCEDA, there was some confusion about, there was a belief by the board, the TCEDA board, that they were getting an annual audit, and that was in fact not the case. So is this a proper the type of audit that every nonprofit gets annually? So this is the, uh, this is an audit that every government is required to do. Okay. So it's different than a nonprofit. But it, but it is a real audit. Yes, it's okay. a real audit. And it's a requirement annually that government agencies are, are audited. Um, and so that is, that's the language that is, that is put in there. Okay. Um, and it's an independent audit. So it's outside of the. But it's, but it's the auditor that on this JPA that performs it. It's not an outside independent audit. Exactly. So the auditor would perform that independent audit. Okay. Um, and then I had a question um, on termination, um, section 12B. Um, and it says that <coughs> upon termination of this agreement, any surplus money in possession of the authority or on deposit in a fund or account of the authority shall be returned in portion, proportion to the contributions made by the taxpayers in each member's mm -hmm. jurisdiction. Does that money go to the general fund or does it go to the fire fund? Does it have the same requirement in spending? It would have the same requirement. So okay. the voters are gonna be asked to, if the council so chooses or if the other members so choose to put a ballot measure for a fire parcel tax, 
that would be a special tax, which would require that 60%, you know, the special majority of the voters pass this, but it would also require that those monies collected would go towards fire services. So any reimbursement of those dollars would still go towards your fire services. But fire services just generally or um, fire as previously restricted, specific purpose fire, I can't read, read my writing. Um, for prevention and suppression services. I mean, so, it's very specific in, in yes. SGPA. So it would have to be that specific. Yes. So, so it still have to go to suppression, pre prevention and suppression services. Exactly. And then from, from our city of Sonora perspective, that would go into our fire department, our fire department budget for those specific, specific purposes. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. It's okay. Here, there's questions and I'm sure the public will have plenty of questions. Um, section 17, by mutual agreement of three fourths of the governing boards mm -hmm. of the members. So, so right now there's six. So okay. right now the initial <coughs> membership is six. So three fourths of the six membership would require four. the amendments. Yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't know how many were on the governing board. Okay. Um, and I just uh, back to fifth up uh, to fifteen. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I got notices. <clears throat> I thought that this was vague, and maybe I just am not reading it correctly. But it's notices to members under this agreement shall be sufficient if delivered to the county administrator, city administrator, or chief secretarial officer. I'm not who, quite sure who that is, or the member, or in or to any other person designated in writing. <laughs> A notice to any random member on this and not no and that's what it's saying it has to be designated in writing so for instance groveland services community services district pete campa is the executive director i believe i hope he might Pete, i don't like get your title yeah. wrong but so that that states that you know the county administrator tracy myself city administrator or whoever is designated as your chief secretarial officer by a fire district or community service district but it's got to be designated in writing that those notices go to those specific people okay. all right that was it I, I um, this, is a, this is a financial question. Mm -hmm. uh, um, although, I mean, I, I think this uh, agreement would benefit um, all of the fire districts in the county. Does the city have the resources to um, join in and put the ballot measure on the ballot, uh, the administrative time and the? And I believe Chris and I looked at this, and we and Chris, if I'm wrong, please join in. But we think it was. For the amount, Chris, could you chime in on the amount of we think the ballot measure would cost for the city of Sedora? Yeah, it, the ballot measure cost between a dollar and a dollar fifty per citizen to uh, have on the ballot. So, like, how many voters? Maybe fifty-five hundred dollars, sixty-five hundred, something like that. So it's all citizens, not just voters. Yes, it's based on your population. Yeah, eligible voters. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But we are. We think that we would be able to sustain that. And... Yes, at that cost. Yes. Okay. And and I know there's questions. I know the public has questions, and the council has public has questions in regards to how would that parcel tax be distributed. Those questions would then be looked at and decided upon once the JPA is formed and the board of directors meet to decide how they want the ordinance potentially written and what that parcel tax would look like. Councilmember Garavena, did you have any questions? He's still there, right? Yeah, no, no, I don't have any questions so far. I'd like to hear public comment. I'm I, the main thing for me is just that it's a um, this is strictly a JPA for a funding mechanism and and not for governing uh, fire services um, throughout the county. It's just a, a funding mechanism. Yes, Councilmember Garaventa, we made our case extremely strong on that. Uh, uh, Deputy City Attorney Nubia Goldstein and I did, and so that's why you're seeing that two-tiered approach with the JPA, because the City of Sonora coming in as initial membership, we, uh, as directed by the Council, we would only be joining um, from a taxing authority only and not joining in um, fire services with the county. 
Okay, and, great. Sounds great. And Chief New, did you have anything to add on this? Just wanted to hear if you had anything. Yeah. Chief. Are you there? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I just wanted to, to thank the council uh, for looking into the opportunity. Um, I think that uh, you know the the city has done a great job with with the budget and bringing a balanced budget. Um, the the fire department definitely has some some issues with being understaffed um, and trying to come back up to the the pre two thousand eight uh, deficits and so. Uh, you know, giving the, the voters a chance to decide and putting the, the voice in their hands, um, I think, is something that is, you know, part of our democracy. So I just appreciate you guys uh, looking at this opportunity um, as a whole for the county and the fire service. Thank you. Do we have any public comment? If you'd like to comment, please press star nine or use the raise your hand feature. Okay, just want to put it out there that there is no public comment on uh, direction or input for forming a Tuolumne County Fire Joint Powers Authority Agreement. So I'll bring it back to the council and a couple things I'll say is that um, obviously it's pretty clear how anti-tax I am, but I will say this is that this gives us a spot at the table to help fight for our city residents. And I think it's a good thing to be a part of this joint power, powers authority. So that is that is my one and a half cents. Well, I think it'll more equitably spread yes. the cost of, uh, of fighting fires across the county, hopefully, and also equitably um, help the, uh, up the various fire agencies. And I would like to add too is that we are on a mutual aid agreement with the county and others. So we all kind of back each other up. So hopefully this puts us on even more of a, I don't want to say level playing field, but I guess that's basically what it is to basically back each other up that much more. So, so again, Mr. Mayor, we're not asking for a vote. Mm -hmm. We're just asking for possible direction. So I, what I am hearing is there are no additional comments. Um, to incorporate um, to the draft to the county. Okay. I was waiting for council member such to say anything. You got it all out, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you. I took more than my share. Okay. Okay, so that is all. So that's all for new business. We go on to the monthly reports. We've got all that in the back of our uh, agenda packet. So then I will go to council member and department head reports, and I will start with the community development department. Rochelle. Thank you. Um, I actually don't have anything to add tonight um, other than uh, next Saturday is our last farmer's market. So everybody get out and enjoy it because it will be on hiatus again until May. So. We are going to have some little goodie bags for the kids, and and there is going to be a place where people can take ball photo, uh, full ball photo booth. So it'll be fun. There'll be a, um, live music, and it'll just be a nice way to send it off for for another year. So everybody, get out and enjoy it. Definitely, definitely will be there. Thank you. Yeah, this has been a hard year for everything, and uh, we'll look forward to it starting up next year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, finance, Chris Gorski. Uh, nothing tonight, thanks. Okay, fire chief, new. Uh, nothing further to add tonight, thank you. Police chief, Vanderweel. Nothing tonight, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, okay. Could I ask a question about um, his uh, summaries? Because the, oh, the- Chief, we got a- we, we we have a question for you. Oh, yeah, there is a I, I, the, the, Chief the, Vanderweel. Chief Vanderweel, sorry. Um, just the, the, the grid is really confusing because there's two columns set for August 2020, and I was wondering which one was supposed to be September 2020. Sorry about that. It should be the uh, first column to, on the on the left-hand side. Should be That's what I thought, but I was like, huh. 
<laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Anything from our esteemed city attorney? Uh, nothing more tonight. Okay. Uh, anything from our city administrator? Nothing to add, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Garaventa. Uh, nothing for me either. Okay, Councilmember Sagestrom. Um, I missed the uh, the uh, Yes Partnership meeting because I was at the League of Cities, um, California Cities Conference, which was really interesting. And I would like to encourage everybody to be very careful on social media. That was one um, uh, um, uh, Round, round table that I went to that was fairly frightening. So just post pictures of your cat, that's about it. Um, then, <laughs> then I would like to um, remind everyone that on Saturday it's prescription take back day at the junction from 10 to two. So if you have any uh, prescription drugs that you want to dispose of, um, that will be happening um, this Saturday. And uh, also the, um, the Tuolumne County uh, Superintendent of Schools uh, posted the California Healthy Kids Survey. Um, and uh, Tuolumne County scored well against state averages uh, for school connectedness and uh, academic motivation and caring adult relationships, high expectations, but we um, exceeded um, the state average in areas of concern, including chronic sadness and hopelessness uh, youth considering suicide, e-cigarette e use, and um, marijuana lifetime usage. So um, I think, you know, these are areas that uh, we need to, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of youth problems and maybe we just don't concentrate on one. We try and um, work on, on this generation who's coming up behind us. It was, it was, you know, one of those up and down kinds of things, a 1300 student sample. So it's worth everybody taking a look at. Um, and uh, I think that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Such. <clears throat> um, a couple things. I um, was contacted by a businesswoman, <clears throat> excuse me, in town about electric vehicle charging stations. And I have since spoke with Darren Grossi, Ryan Campbell, Sherry Brennan. I spoke to Mary Rose a little bit about it. And we're, we're going to meet. I have a, a whole binder from TCTC on the subject. I mean, I think it would be really, and there's money out there to, to put, to develop that in the city um, or in the community actually. You know, I, I, we certainly don't want to be sending people out of the city for dinner because we can't because they can't charge their cars here. So, I think it's it's really time for us to develop that. And I, I just thought it was a very fun. Um, it's just a fun thing to even talk about. Um, also attended the uh, League of Cities conference for three days last week. Was that last week? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was the seventh to the ninth. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what week that was. Seventh to ninth, and <clears throat> a lot of really, really. That was thank you, Mary Rose, yeah. for, for providing that to us. Just so much good information, and and really got to hear what other cities were doing. And there was that was very timely for me because there's a there was a lot of information on social equity and racial justice and. And I mean, it's that topic, although seems pretty um, tender sometimes, it's it's kind of gone mainstream. So, I mean, just- yeah, there were a lot of cities that were um, that were dealing with it. A lot of, a lot of cities. Um, <clears throat> the Social Equity, Equity Committee met last Tuesday night and, um, and we had a long um, overdue uh, Vision Sonora Brown Act committee meeting. Um, approving banners that uh, Sonar Chamber is is um, funding, <clears throat> and I, you know, just a lot of um, there are like eight different banners that will hang on uh, lampposts up and down Washington Street, and 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 I think um, <clears throat> the Vision Sonar Design and Review Committee has done a really good job. I want to make a have, say a special thank you to Lori Lehman who just works tire, tirelessly for Vision Sonora. And I think has done a lot of, of good work. So um, 
And Mary Rose asked that we hold that meeting now quarterly and not just like once every two years. So we'll be doing that. Um, and that's it. And, uh, you know, I've just got one thing basically uh, on October 11th, Saturday, October 11th, got to meet with our congressman and I've invited him back to the city when he wants to. Obviously, his district is huge. It goes all the way from the north of Fresno to way north of us. So it's a huge district, but got to advocate a little bit on the city's behalf and had a good frank conversation with them and look forward to many more conversations. So that's all I have. And we will adjourn the meeting at 6.02 p.m. Wow, I thought this was a really long meeting.